Welcome to WTSA being held here in New Delhi, where I'm joined in the studio today by Sandra Massimiano, who is the chairwoman of Anacom, the regulatory authority for Portugal. Sandra, welcome to the studio. Yeah, thanks a lot for the invitation. Glad to be here. I'm very glad to see you again. And uh, I wanted to start off by talking a little bit about the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. In your opinion, how can we harness standards uh, to accelerate progress towards these towards specific UN Sustainable Development Goals? So, first of all, I think it's very important to mention that standardization by itself, it really contributes to, um, to the SDGs. Uh, so, think about improving connectivity to foster employment and, of course, increasing GDP. So, immediately it relates to SDG number one, fighting poverty, SDG number eight, uh, decent work and economic growth. So, this is uh, by itself, they are connected. So, what we have to do is every time that we work in a, um, we, we work on the process of making standards, they have to be aligned with SDGs and we have to work in a collaborative way. So uh, push stakeholders to have that in mind and it will be very helpful to have specific metrics. So whenever we are working on standards, we can look how far are we from uh, reaching these uh, SDGs. So this is very important. And I can tell you also one, uh, one of the um, uh, like challenges we had uh, when we were trying to um, uh, to, to implement and deploy the new um, su uh, submarine cable that connects our the continent with the with, with the Portuguese islands. So this submarine cable has sensors, environmental sensors that uh, allows us to look at uh, some sea variables like uh, uh, the bottom ocean the pressure, the temperature, earthquake activity. So this is very important. But we face a big challenge. When we, we were implementing the public tender, we didn't have global specifications that were set in the, and, and we had this, uh, uh, this challenge uh, ahead. And uh, we do believe that ITUT is going to be very helpful to set these uh, global, uh, uh, global standards that uh, relate uh, with SDGs. In our case, with the subsea uh, cables, um, specifically the, with the sensors, they relate with the SDG 14, you know, life underwater. But also with 11, with 13, with so many. So this is really important. We had this in mind, but then we had the other problem. We didn't have the global standards. So they have to be related and connected. Now, another acronym which uh, uh, also is, is, is like the SDGs, another acronym is AI, yes. and that's very much on, uh, uh, on people's minds, artificial intelligence. What are the key future trends, uh, and how do you think AI is going to impact the ICT telecom sector? Yeah, like, uh, of course, it's going to impact any sector, and in, uh, uh, if we think about like, how we organize work, and uh, related to human resources, that's uh, undoubtable that we are going to have a big impact in telecoms as in other sector. Uh, of course, uh, also uh, improving consumer experience, so immediately it's important for for, uh, for telecoms, but more specifically the, with, the, with, the, with the sector itself, it's going to increase efficiency in the way we manage the networks. And of course, if you think about 5G and network slicing, AI can be very helpful in improving efficiency in this uh, in this regard. Of course, uh, uh, managing X spectrum, uh, optimizing bandwidth uh, location, all that is very important. But also with security, it can uh, uh, help us to avoid certain frauds and to act to instead of uh, just reacting to act more in advance to fight, uh, uh, to fight these problems and help with cybersecurity. So in that sense, it's very helpful. And there's also another point, which is making connectivity more inclusive, because AI can help a lot uh, building devices that are more friendly to high disabilities, uh, people with disabilities. So we are making connectivity more inclusive with AI. Now, I want to do uh, talk to you regarding gender. Now, the field of standardization is still a sector that's dominated by men. I wanted to ask you, how do you think uh, that we can encourage greater participation of women in the standardization sector? So, I think we should be aware that the fact that we have less women in tech 
and uh, specifically on the uh, standardization uh, field. It's not a matter of preference. It's not like because women prefer less to work in tech or they are less suitable to work in tech. It's a lot is because society make uh, women to believe uh, that is the case, that they are more suitable to other fields, to other areas. And, um, and with time, and there is research that can show that, it is really true that women are less prone to take risks, less prone to negotiation. And this is very important. Negotiation is extremely important when we are talking about standards. Because we are here all together and everyone trying to uh, make their own point. So women need uh, to take more risks, need to negotiate, and we have to make women to believe that they are as suitable as men for that. Um, so they've been pushing, pushed behind. So we need role models. So we need to uh, foster network of women and uh, a more collaborative work where we can have expertise in the field. And those expertise, those professionals, they will you know, make women to believe that they are in the right position. So this is extremely important. Of course, advocate for public policy uh, to promote that, um, increase public awareness, education. It's extremely important. But uh, I think it's also very important to teach men that, uh, that these biases are not uh, nature-based, but nurture-based. And we have to fight. More. Well, thank you very much for joining us in the yeah. studio today. Sandra Massimiliano, Chairwoman of Anacom, the Regulatory yeah. Authority for Portugal. And uh, we hope to join you, join, uh, we hope that you will be able to join us again yes. uh, very soon. My pleasure. Thanks. Thank you. And if you've enjoyed this interview, which I'm sure you will have, then do check out our other interviews on our YouTube channel, as well as our podcast channels. And for further information, visit our website at www.itu.int. Thanks for tuning in.